So I just, uh, I think probably my biggest qualification in presenting Ralph tonight was I was the driver uh, coming down from Washington uh, this afternoon. Uh, and I, it dawned upon me at one point, I had sitting next to me the, uh, the man who wrote the definitive book on auto safety. And as soon as the, uh, the door closed and he got in the car, I was thinking to myself, uh, good grief, this is going to be really stressful. <laughs> no cell phone. Make sure that the, uh, I don't go too fast. And just make sure I, I make it on time. Uh, we, we just made it. Uh, I know that the, uh, the university is very pleased to have with us a, uh, a gentleman who's been, for five decades, one of the most influential individuals in America. As a matter of fact, Time Magazine recently uh, stated that Ralph Nader is uh, one of the 100 most influential uh, Americans in, his, in, in this country. Um, I, it would be difficult to find anybody who who doesn't know who he is uh, and doesn't know his many contributions uh, as a consumer advocate, an intellectual thinker, social critic, an author of many books, a subject of films. Uh, and if, if you haven't seen the film uh, An Unreasonable Man, which came out, I think, in 07, I would suggest you rent it uh, or buy a copy of it. It's a really uh, good movie about uh, Ralph and uh, about all the things that he did early in his career and even up, up to now. Um, he was also, uh, in addition, a, uh, a four-time candidate for President of the United States, as I'm sure many of you know. Um, and he was even a host of Saturday Night Live, which I'm sure he'd like to forget. <laughs> I can imagine. He's been on the covers of all major magazines, Time, Newsweek, People, uh, virtually every magazine, probably um, at a time when some of you might, have, might not have been born, but I, some of you have. Uh, his, his prominence has been a direct result of his efforts to help create a framework of laws, regulatory agencies, and federal standards, and he's improved the quality of life for two generations of Americans. Ralph's not new to New Jersey. Um, he was an undergrad at Princeton, uh, Woodrow, Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson School of International Affairs. He graduated there, uh, magna cum laude with a major in government and economics. He went on to Harvard Law, where he was editor of the uh, Law Review, graduated with honors. And, and by the way, Ralph told me that he's been here, and as you can see from the photo in the front, that he's been here like three times before. Um, Ralph made his first headlines in 60, 1965 with a book called Unsafe at Any Speed, which took the auto industry to task for knowingly producing unsafe vehicles. Ralph's uh, advocacy of auto safety and the publicity led to the establishment of the National Highway Safety Administration, of which the most tangible benefit was the uh, introduction of seatbelts. So I, I, I think we can fairly say that um, thanks to Ralph, there's probably hundreds of thousands of lives that, that were probably saved. Ralph went on to create an, an, an organization of energetic young lawyers and researchers, often called Nader's Raiders, who produced exposés of industrial hazards, pollution, unsafe products, and government neglect of consumer safety laws. He's widely recognized as founder of the consumer rights movement. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Public Citizen as one. He played very instrumental roles in the uh, creation of the EPA, Environment. Environmental Protection Agency, the uh, OSHA, which is the Occupational Safe and Health, Health Administration, the Freedom of Information Act, and the Consumer Product Safety Commission. For many years, Ralph has, has harshly criticized the two major political parties for preserving a campaign finance system that makes them dependent on wealthy entrepreneurs, especially the corporate lobbyists. He has argued that there's really um, there's only, there's only one political party, which he fond, fondly calls the Republicrats. Uh, in an effort to bring some genuinely independent ideas uh, to presidential politics, he ran for president in 96 and 2000, uh, I think both times the Green Party, and then 2004 and 8 as an independent. Um, finally, I'd like to add that I have a personal link to Ralph. We both grew up in, in neighboring towns in small town Connecticut. Our families were friends, and uh, I can tell you uh, from what I know, uh, Ralph is the real deal. Um, he's, a genu he's genuine, he's a selfless 
public advocate who's a true American patriot, having dedicated his entire life to making this place better. He also has a great sense of humor despite, despite this professorial and rather sometimes dour de demeanor <laughs> that he often projects. Um, I, I often wonder how he keeps going at it, uh, especially after the erosion and dismantling in recent years of the many uh, laws and regulations that uh, he helped bring into being in the 70s. He has incredible tenacity. Uh, when asked to define himself, he often responds, full-time public citizen, the most important office for anyone to achieve. Um, tonight, Ralph is here to share his views on health care, which is the hottest topic these days. I know that he has very strong views on, on what's happening and what we should be doing. And I expect you'll find, in the very least, whether you agree with him or not, uh, I expect you'll find his views uh, intellectually stimulating. Uh, so, uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, welcome Ralph. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I ask Ralph to please come up. And Thank you, uh, Lloyd, and Dean Wyman, and Matt, and ladies and, and gentlemen. Nice to be back here. Uh, I'd like to uh, open up this uh, subject, which recently has been uh, exposed to Limbaughism and uh, incredible distortions and prevarications by distinguishing between health care and health insurance. Uh, the headlines always say, what is Obama going to do about health care? What is Congress going to do about health care? The, the issue is health insurance. Uh, we, we really don't get down to health care. If we were debating health care, we, we, we'd be debating not just uh, extensive and adequate coverage in case somebody gets sick. We would be talking about the 58,000 Americans, according to OSHA, who die every year from workplace-related diseases and trauma. We'd be talking about 100,000 people a year, according to the Harvard School of Public Health physicians, who die because of medical incompetence and negligence in hospitals every year. We'd be talking about 65,000 people, according to EPA, who die from air pollution every year. We'd be talking about uh, trauma on the highway. We'd be talking about um, adequate nutrition We'd be talking about obesity. We'd be talking about food uh, processing uh, firms that uh, try to hook people into what is increasingly being viewed uh, as a uh, somatic uh, surrender uh, in, in the person's body to high levels of salt, sugar, and fat, which, of course, McDonald's and other, company, other uh, firms have uh, excelled in. Uh, starting at a very young age with their customers. We'd be talking about a lot of things like that if we're talking about health care. But we're going to talk uh, about health insurance reform, which is not unrelated to health care, but certainly only a part of basic advance and uh, longevity in this country, quality of life physically and mentally, uh, which we presumably all want to uh, advance. In this country, for example, we're 20th in infant mortality, maybe even more. There are 19 countries who have lower infant mortality uh, than uh, we do. So we, we've got a public health problem of uh, increasingly serious proportions by comparison to other uh, companies abroad. So let me start with uh, uh, 1945, very briefly. Uh, the war was over. The U.S. emerged victorious, the most powerful, prosperous country in the world. And Western Europe was destroyed. It was uh, <clears throat> described as cities in ruins, countryside destitute, semi-starvation, half of the people were unemployed, nothing was working. 